This is our seminar six, and we will have a look to the files. So here in the files, uh, I have my model. Ah, this is seminar. Seminar five. I will see. It is five, number five now. And. Uh, You can download model to that to continue in case you don't have your own model. And assignments, you can see we have new assignment and additionally we have training example for test two. So you can already today download and see how it could be for the test number two. This test number two is really important because you can have 35 points from this. Do you already know where will it be? Like the date? I'm sorry? The date of the second test. Date of the second test, it will it is planned for the eighth week of semester. So now we have the fifth week. Uh, usually it is on Friday, 27th. It should be originally then. This is 5th in November, 6th, 7th. But again, on the 17th November, we have holiday in Slovakia. So it will be not earlier, but very probably it will be on 24th of November. Test number two. And let us see what we have today to add. We have something that is important for statistics. You can see in the third paragraph. It is written export the average time a customer waits in the queue to purchase a ticket. And export it using text file block. So I will show you how to use uh, some block text file to export data for evaluation. Additionally, in the second paragraph, you can see I will show you how to calculate confidence interval. Until now, when we received some result, it was only estimation of the mean. But we need, we have to use 90 percentage confidence interval, for example, in our final report. Because we have stochastical inputs, it means we have stochastical outputs. And in case we have random numbers, we have to use confidence interval. So I will show you how to calculate this and this. And additionally, uh, we have again some breaks in our model, but unexpected breaks. A week ago, I have showed we used lunch breaks. But lunch break, it is an expected break. We are able to use some timetable, some schedule for lunch break because we know every day 11.30 or every day 1 p.m. But we can have unexpected breaks, some failures, and we have two types of them in our assignment today. So the first one, to enter indoor exhibition, there is a turnstile. So our visitors are checking tickets in the turnstile. And after this check in, they can enter indoor exhibition. But this turnstile uh, is um, uh, in some bad conditions. So 
um, average time of working is three hours. So this trans style is working three hours average time. We can uh, generate using exponential distribution. And after this working time, we have some failure. And to fix this failure, again, uh, we need time with average duration of 20 minutes, but again generated from exponential distribution. And after repairing, we have a test for five minutes. And after this, this turn style works again. So we will use state chart in our model to define these different states uh, and this failure. So this is one example. And the second one, we have outdoor exhibition and it must be cleaned after every 30th visitor. It means we are closing for five minutes this outdoor exhibition. Uh, visitors that are already there, they can continue in uh, exhibition, but we will not allow entry of new visitors in five minutes. And there I will show you another way how to do this. Uh, so I will open my model. from seminar four. And I will check, probably I already have slides. Yes, I have a slides, so you will see these slides of, ah, oh, this is seminar four. This is seminar four, seminar five, yes. As I said, we have this content. Mm -hmm. So how to start? I will skip this, 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 and I will start with the determination of 90 percentage of confidence interval. Uh, maybe I uh, can you try switch off the light in front of this. Yeah. And uh, yes, can we have it like this? So you can see we have to go to the main class and to calculate a confidence interval. Ah, probably I forgot to share my screen. So uh, it will be recorded. So it is recorded from now. We need to go to main class of our model. Yes, before this, uh, I will save it as a seminar five. And probably I will have use magnifier. So let us go to the conf replication. Double click to open it. And First, we need to add two uh, variable. One variable for left side of confidence interval and second variable for the right side of confidence interval. Because it's we have here this graph. And uh, when I start this,
when I start my replications, you can see the line from left to the right. Uh, it is better to modify a little bit in the settings. So for these settings, I prefer for the scale to be fixed, horizontal to 500, because have, we have, I think, 500 replication. And on vertical, I prefer have like 120 because it is possibly this value uh, or in uh, seconds, and I would like to see last 500. Uh, 500, yes. And when I go, this is source of my data, data set, and it keeps 200 samples. I would like to keep 500. And uh, I, I would like to update automatically. And again, this one, experience, position, legend, and update automatically. Okay, so when I start my replication now, in this case, we have some value, and this is average from 500 replications, average rating time. But you can imagine that when we calculate any value, and we have samples of this value, and we then make some histogram, we have some mean. Yeah, so this is the mean, but in case this is only sample of uh, of some uh, random numbers, we have to calculate some called confidence interval. So we have some uh, value on the left side and value on the right side. So this is a confidence interval, and this is one half, and this is the second half of the confidence interval. Yeah. So this is one half and the second half of confidence interval. So I hope you already started with statistics, this uh, thing. Uh, I need only remind what are we doing now. So for confidence interval, we will use uh, two variables, variable left waiting time and variable right waiting time, because we are interested in uh, confidence interval of this output value, this one, average waiting time, okay? So I can uh, move it a little bit up and I will add one variable. Variable is in agent palette. So variable, variable left uh, of confidence interval. Left side, what is the name in the presentation? Left waiting time. Okay, so let us use the same. Left waiting time. And additionally, we need right side of this waiting time confidence interval. So we will need these variables. 
and now how to calculate. I will show this uh, formula, but to understand and uh, maybe again to remind. Calculate confidence interval, it is plus or minus, minus left or uh, left or right side, and uh, it is some uh, constant value. This is developed from normal distribution. And then we have Value of uh, number of our samples. In our case, we have 500 samples. And here we have deviation. And this deviation we call in our formula. So this is what, how you can find it in some books. And this is how we use it in uh, any logic. And you see for the left, we use. Average rating time minus this half width, and then for right wait, right side we are doing plus. Yeah. So this formula is to calculate half width. Half width of confidence interval, and once we use minus and second time plus, and then we receive uh, both sides uh, of confidence interval. This is important because you will need to use it uh, in your final report uh, when you evaluate output data. So let us go how to do this. We need to go to replication class, replications class, and to after simulation run section. And first we can calculate um, left side. So first we need the average. And then left side is minus, as you can see in the presentation. Yes, yeah, so statistics for average waiting time mean minus. Maybe it is better to do like this. So minus. And first I need this constant. And then from the same statistics, average waiting time, I will call deviation method. And I will divide it again by Yes, so for double, I can use SQRT, but I will have number of replications inside. So I have the count I can use to have a number of replications. So this is 
to calculate left side and I can copy this. And just to change the name of variable here. What is the name? Right. Right waiting time, but this time not minus, but plus. So I can check. Something is wrong. Ah, OK, because I'm using I am writing number as we do it in Slovakia, but I have to use dot. A dot. And now it looks it's OK, so I will start my replications again. And you see now. I have. Average. Estimation of mean and I have. Left side of waiting time of, of this confidence interval and right side of the confidence interval. So in case I am going to use my numbers in uh, some final report, I am writing it like this. So average rating time is from 106 and this seconds to 110 dot seconds. Yes. So this is what I can write to to the final report. My expected estimated average rating time is in this interval with uh, confidence 90 percentage. So this you can see uh, here in the presentation, this slide, and now uh, we will write the result directly to the main class using a text object. So again, we go to this palette presentation and I will take this text object and name could be I think text confidence interval I will check with ah so waiting time interval we have in presentation just to be able to compare later. And uh, yeah, when it will be inactive, we can have some text there, bold 16. But we will update or we will change this using some text. And I would like to write there that confidence interval is and so on. So have a look here. It will be like the 90 confidence percent confidence interval for time spent and so on. So I can copy this simply from my presentation. Oops. Um, and I will put it 
to my model and in case it will be without any error, some typo, I can paste it to the teams as well. So we can see not run, but only this. Hey, this is this is calling my text. I create it now and then we have set text and then it is a text. The 90 percentage confidence interval for the time spent waiting in uh, in queue. Is. And I, I, I can have a two decimal numbers, not one, two decimal numbers. So I am using variable for left side and right side there. So this is just what you can use in your semester project. This is not to use it in a second test but to use it in a semester project, something like this. And what is uh, impact of it? What, are, what, what, it uh, what is then new in our replications? You see, I have this text with these numbers. And hmm, because I have probably Slovak settings, I don't have a dot here, but three commas. It could it could be a little bit misleading. So be careful sometimes with commas and dots and other symbols. But this was this report or this text about confidence interval. So this was one part of assignment. And additionally, I will add one line, red line, and one line, blue line, to show you where is our left and right side of confidence interval. You can find it in a presentation here, so the result will be like this plot. So currently we already have one data set and it is a data set for average waiting time. And we will add new data sets, two data sets, one for left side and one for right side. So as you can see, we already have one data set and I will go to the statistics or to the analytics palette and I will use another data set. The S data set. Left. Waiting time. And additionally, I will put here another data set. ES left, uh, not left, right, pay, ink, time. So I have two new data sets. For this data set, I need to change my settings. Probably you um, know we will use our own X and Y axis. And we would like to keep 500 and update automatically. And same we do for data set right waiting time. Again, we don't use horizontal axis like this. So these settings and update automatically. So we have new data sets. We can go here to this plot. Uh, it is in 
uh, Slovak, so it is like fixing average waiting time. We already have this and we can add like data set left. I'm sorry, this is only the title. So uh, this is like left side of the dense interval and data set it is here. The S left waiting time and maybe the blue one. And additionally, again, a data set, it is like right side of the credence interval, and I will call, I will use ES right waiting time and red probably. Mm -hmm. So I have currently three different lines here. Green one, red one, blue one. I'm using new data sets for left side and right side. And uh, yes, we need to, um, to, 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 to create connection, how to receive data there. Because currently it is not done. We have data sets. We have a plot where we use these data sets and additionally, we need to write a code similarly as we are doing for this data set. We need to receive for this. So we go for to, to the replications and we need to use code. So this is for data set for average waiting time. And now we add data set left waiting time. Add variable left waiting time. Uh, I'm not I'm not sure I have to I have to go to the code. Now oh, it is correct. So it is like this. Data set. For this data set, we have count and mean, and then we will have a ah, count and this variable. Mm -hmm. OK. So it is like this. So we have, uh, you see, horizontal uh, value and vertical value. So for horizontal value, we can use the same as we have here. We can copy this for the horizontal value and this will be for, uh, for vertical value and very similar for the right side. First, we need value for the horizontal value. It is um, number of replications and then current value from this variable.
I will copy this. And there is another thing you can find in the presentation. In presentation, you can see that we are using this red and blue, red and blue after 30 replications because uh, it is not recommended to calculate confidence interval for less than 30 replications. So it means we have additional code there. So in case we have more than 30 replications, I will simply copy and put there. In case we have more than 30 replication, then we will have this, I think. <laughs> My colleague is joking. <laughs> Uh, the Mr. Lendel, he opened. So I have a cold Kofola. If you want, I have some glasses for students. <laughs> okay. So this will probably work. Just to understand what this code will do. After 30 replications, we can see two lines and one line will be upper and second, uh, the lower or left or right uh, border of my uh, interval. So I can try it now. So we started with green and then you see after 30, I have red and blue. So you see that uh, it is important to have enough replications. You will have it uh, in uh, your lectures that it is not so easy to say just, I would like to have 500 replication or, or 1,000 or 5,000. Uh, number of replication, it is defined by what uh, confidence interval you prefer. So now when I start it again, I just modify a little bit my settings. It is important to know uh, what is expected confidence interval for my output values, because now we can see uh, it is about 10 and more and more replication we have, it is thinner and thinner. So the more replications we run, the thinner confidence interval we have, the more precise uh, estimation of average value for this waiting time we have. And for example, when I have a look now, so it is about 4.5, 4 four and a half second is a confidence interval. Yes, this is 111.66 minus 108.17. So confidence interval is about 4.5 seconds, four and a half seconds. And uh, maybe my customer expects that my confidence interval will be about two seconds. So based on this, I need to calculate number of replications I will use in my simulation model. So you will have it 
in uh, your lectures. How to calculate, uh, how to estimate number of replications for your model. I'm sorry, I will write to my colleague that at least I would like to have a COFOA. Can I ask the 90% that you typed? Is that a fixed number for everything or how is it determined? Uh, it depends on uh, how precise you would like to be. But for example, we are mostly using 90. You can have 95. Where is it reflected? Sorry? So why is that change in the number reflected? So uh, when I have 95 uh, percentage confidence interval, it is thinner. And does the formula change? Uh, yes, yes, formula, it will change. This constant number, this 1.6449, it will change. So when we go, confidence interval, so probably we will find here, here we have the formula, this one, this formula. Uh, where it is. Yeah, something like this. This is X plus minus. And this is uh, this. Uh, uh, the uh, deviation and number of uh, replications. Yeah, so the, the distribution. Okay. Yeah. So this is uh, delivered from the student distribution. And yes, you can calculate the 95 confidence confidence interval if you want, but we are calculating. Yeah, so the 97.5 and are correct. So we have some level alpha. We are using level alpha uh, five, but in case you have level alpha 2.5, then you have uh, this confidence interval. So let us continue. I would like to. I'm sorry to interrupt with these jokes. Um, now we would like to continue with uh, export with exporting values for our future work to export something. We have this library connectivity. And we can have we can use this block text file. So put text file somewhere here. I go to, to my slides to know the exact name. So we are approaching here. It's connectivity palette A. Ah, text file export waiting time. So this will be the name of it. Text file export waiting time. And we will write the file. And we need to set where it will be. So this is file and location using this. I will define where it is. Ah, the dialog is here. So I can do it to my directory, to the folder where I have my model. So it will be like uh, they export ink. Time and it will be a text file. Yeah. And you can see this file, it will be saved to my disk. 
after I will stop my replications. So text file, export text, write. We will write this file and we need again add uh, for our. You can decide, you can put it to downloaded files, to downloads or any other folder, but I keep it in a folder where I have my current model in the same location. And again, we need a code and it is this one. So text file export waiting time. This is the name and then print line. And we will write there again. It will be number of replication. Then space and. Current. Uh, average from the current replication because we would like to save 500 results of 500 replications to this text file. So I am going to replications. So this you will need for your semester. Uh, project, not for the test, but for semester project. TF text file. Export waiting time. Print line. And inside first we will have a, a number of replications. It means it will be like numbered. Uh, list of results. And we can receive it. For example, from this. So this will be just number. Plus and we will make a space there. Oh, where, is, where is this symbol? What I need. Ah, I will switch to Slovak. No. <laughs> yes, I need this because this will create a space. And then I call result for uh, from the replication in this histogram data waiting time I have a average waiting time and I need this average value so this is the code I need to write So for example, I will have number one space 99.7 and, and a new line will be number two space 87.7. Third line will be like number three space and something. So I hope I don't have a typo there. It looks correctly. I can start replications. I have to wait for all 500 applications now. So now when I go to my folder. So I have it here in my computer, in my disk. Models. Yes, models, seminar five. Here. 
So you can see I have this text file already here. I can open it, but you see size is zero currently. And it is empty. Now it's empty. So I need to, so this is the last replication. I need to close this window, close. And now you see it is recorded already, 12. And now I have my results. Um, in November, we will have a seminar how to evaluate output values. And for this seminar, you will need output analyzer. Something like this output analyzer. I will give you installations because this is not included in any logic software, but it is included in Arena simulation software. Uh, I'm not sure, but it will be soon. I'm not sure if it is already there, but it will soon be in a Moodle. So it will be possible to download this output analyzer or Arena simulation software after you install uh, Arena simulation software. It will be installed together with it. And we need this structure, this data to evaluate our experiments. So you can see in replication number 226, the average waiting time was about 105.7 seconds. So this is what we received after 500 replication. So in some replications, it is really short or small average value 60. In another is twice so big. So you see it is really important run a lot of replications to be able to estimate uh, relevant uh, average value for our output parameter. So when we have a look to our assignment, For now, I'm sorry with this. For now, we solved the uh, second and third paragraph, and now we are going to these uh, unexpected breaks. We are going to uh, failures, how to simulate failures. Of course, maybe you remember that uh, when we are working in schedule in a resource pool in resource pool uh, you can use something like maintenance or you can use something like failures and repairs but it is very similar to schedule we already used for uh, lunch break so i will not show you how to use this I would like to teach you something new. So when we have a look to process modeling library, we have some basic uh, blocks here, but when we go, for example, here to state chart, we have components that we are using currently. So we, we are going to use this state chart. I need to make a space in my model for this. So I will move some elements, some components in this model. I need more space, so I will move this. And I need to move this and this to make some space. 
nice. And I can put the variable for turnstile and slider for turnstile here. And I can move a resource pools for tourist guides here. And same the schedule for tourist guides that speak only Slovak. It could be here. And I have enough space now to create my state chart. So state chart, it is created by these components. I have a state and I have a transitions. In advanced state charts, I can have a branch or final state or so other things, but now I will use only state and entry point and transition. In our assignment, we can see our turnstile. It is working. It is one state. What do you think? What other states do we have? When you read this paragraph, please detect other states we can have for our turnstile. The first one is that it is working OK. But preparing, yes, this is another state. OK, so uh, you mean uh, failure? It is uh, this 20 minutes generated using exponential distribution. And then we have test, testing, and this is another. Yeah, so correct. We have three states. Turnstile is working. It is one state. Second state, it is in failure. And the third state, it is under testing. Yes, so we will create these three states in our model. So just take the state and put it somewhere here. First one, second one, and third one. So we have three states. And we can give the name like state OK, state failure, and state testing. Then additionally, we will need some transitions. Yes, so here we have transition. So just take transition and put here. So it means after it is working, it can happen it will have a state failure. Then we have another transition like this, and it means after failure, after transition, it this failure will be finished because it will be repaired and we need to test. And then we have another transition. It will be a little bit complicated to Create it, but just to design. Yeah, this is just the design. So like this. Yeah. And after testing, it will be okay again. And uh, sorry. And it will work in a circle during our replication, during simulation time, OK? So we need to define the time for transition. I said, and it is written in the assignment, that three hours it works for three hours, but it is not the constant, but it is 
uh, random number generated from exponential distribution. So transition between state OK and state failure, we can define like this. It is time out. It will be in hours. And we are using exponential distribution for this. Ah. <laughs> yes. So this means our turnstile will work approximately for three hours, but generated from this number. And then we know that from failure to testing this uh, transition, it takes in average 20 minutes. So again, minutes, again, it, we found somewhere, probably we have some recording of failures from one year and after evaluation, we found that this repairing takes approximately 20 minutes based on exponential distribution. So this is for repairing. And then we need a testing and testing it takes five minutes. Uh, we can have a look on this transition. You can see that transition, it is not only simple timeout, but we can have some rate, some condition on or uh, we can wait for agent arrival or we can receive some message from somewhere. So these state charts, uh, they could be used, for example, in agent-based simulation models. Currently, we have discrete event simulation, but in any logic, we can have a state chart, for example, for agent-based simulation models. We have simple model, we have simple state chart, we are using timeout option. Uh, it is not finished now because we need to make some action with this turnstile, OK? So what does it mean when uh, this turnstile is out of service? Yeah, let's have a look. In case it is working, it, it has capacity one. Uh, and we, we can think about the capacity. What is capacity when it is out of service? It is zero, yeah? So we are able to use our, our state and we can use some action here. So we can rewrite like delay. This is the name, this is name of this turnstile. And we can set the capacity, set capacity to zero. Yeah? And this way we say it is corrupted or it is broken. And similarly, we can turn in back in operation. It means after testing, ah, I'm sorry, uh, this uh, zero, it should happen not here, but when it is in failure, OK? So on entry action for failure is that capacity is zero. And entry action for state, OK, capacity is one. In beginning, of course, in our model, capacity is one. But after it will have a failure, we need to change it back to number one. So we are. Uh, using capacity and we are able to control capacity using this. And 
we need the last step. We need to define start entry point for this, like this. So this will work. So this is our simple state chart to define that sometimes our uh, turnstile has some failure. And this is a re really smart way how to define some failure. We are, this means it is working again. Yeah? And it is here in state OK on entry action. Because when testing, it is still not capacity one. Yeah. So after testing, we have this five minutes transition, and then entry action is capacity one. And after this transition, it is zero. So I can compare with my presentation. It is somewhere in the beginning. Yes, so this is the state chart library. And as I said, turnstile capacity set capacity to one. Yes, this is, this is correct. Duration, capacity zero, duration, duration, and that's it. Yeah, so now I can start the model and you can see I have to run it slower to be able to see that it is really corrupted. And it will simply change the color now. Ah, you see, it is corrupted now. And now it's testing. And it will be back OK. And it will change the states. And when it is corrupted, uh, the capacity here, it will be zero. So visitors, they will be waiting in a queue in front of. Three hours. Yeah, it, it takes uh, when we had already three hours, it will be somewhere here, but it could be longer or shorter because it is from uh, this uh, distribution. Ah, yes, now it's failure. So you see it works. Now we go to model another failure. Oh, this is not the failure but it is some um, break that is difficult to, to plan the time when it, it will be. Ta -ta -ta. Yes, it is here. Uh, cleaning, so we will clean, have some cleaning of our outdoor exhibition every 30th visitor for five minutes during cleaning visitors wait in front of turnstile. We can do it uh, with a combination of new blocks. Hold block, two event blocks and one variable. So we will do it. So let us place hold between the queue and turnstile this is entry to the outdoor exhibition. Yes, yeah? so we need to put hold. It is like a sign for traffic somewhere in the street. Like this. And the hold block it is in process modeling library. It is this one you see. So I will put it here. The name is hold tour. So when you keep your mouse, you see that hold temporarily blocks agents flow for a following branch of the process. It is used when 
and so on. So, so, so you can read about the hold, how it works. When we go to the settings, you see we can have different modes and we will use this manual. But you can have automatic block or conditional block, but we will use the first one. And to block and unblock, we use this event. So we will schedule action to open uh, outdoor exhibition and to close outdoor exhibition. So we need two of them. One, it will be event close. And we will use another one event open. It could be um, very good help for us to use event, this event blocks, but we have to be careful because it is not always working as we expect. But first I will show you how it works here. So additionally, I will use this variable because I will record, I will save last number of customers. So how is it in the presentation to have the same count of visitors last cleaning? This is complicated name. Uh, Variable count of visitors last cleaning. And in case we would like to have some very long replication, I will show you example. The type for variable could be different. And for example, it could be like other and long just to show you. And initial value, it is zero. So we will save the number after 30 visitors we have and 60 and 90 because we will need it here for closing of our event. So this event, we will start this event in case we will have some condition that it will be. So we can trigger event using timeout, rate or condition. So I will use condition. So, uh, you know, we have some internal variables. And uh, for example, to know what number of visitors entered to this delay. For this, I have in port and to know what number left, I have this out. So I can write a condition. I need to be back. Uh, no, not, not, not here, here in this event. Yes, event close, select event close, and my condition is I am asking what is number of uh, visitors for this outdoor tour, or uh, I can ask for turnstile. It is the same. Hmm. It is the same, but Yes, I can I can use both, uh, but here we are asking for this turn style. OK. So for this turn style, it is delay. Turn style without because without uh, tourist guide in the outdoor. I am going to use it without tourist guide and in. It means this is number of 
visitors I have already there. Uh, how to detect that it is the 30th, 60th, 90th? Not in queue. We count the numbers and then divide by 30 equals one. Yes. Yes. So we need to divide. And now I forgot how to write it. So you see it is like this modulo 30. Yes. And it is equal to zero. In this case, it is condition. This is fulfilled. So when I put this condition and it is equal to zero, it means I have 30. Yeah. And after I clean the outdoor exhibition, I can wait for 60. And again, the result, it will be zero. And again, I can close. Then I can clean. I can open. And again, after 90, condition is fulfilled. But <laughs> For any logic, when I use only this, it will close only once. I need to restart the event. Yes, yeah, so uh, to use this event block, I need to restart it after 30 and 30 and 30. So this is why I have this variable to be able to restart uh, the event. So uh, I go back. So this is one condition. Yeah, modulo is a function that like divides and then and the is what is the rest? Yeah, yeah. The rest has to be zero because but it's in one. This case no, it's ah, you mean so? Uh, you mean it is not necessary to put there this? It, we can we can have it without, yeah. This is what you are asking. Okay. This is true. When this is true, we will stop. Yes, and this is true, and it it should stop. Okay. Yeah. This is just for our students. We have students that study management in other study programs and they don't understand. So I need to write equal to zero. So I need additional condition because I need to restart. So uh, I need to write uh, this. And, and I will call this uh, variable variable and you can see here in the presentation i i need to compare that uh, it is higher number than before the previous cleaning so for previous cleaning it was zero and now I have 30 so I can close. And next time when any logic uh, finds that it is fulfilled, I will have the last cleaning was by 30. In case he would like to stop by 30, it will be not stopped. It has to re increase to 60 and then it is fulfilled and I can stop then again. So I am asking again for this. But it must be greater than last saved value. So now this condition, it will work and it will restart. But we have additionally some action. Similarly, as we did it here in state chart, and we set capacity to one or set capacity to zero, we need to do something similar for this hold. I need 
to close or open this hold. So here, after I detect it is true for first and to for the second question, I am calling hold. And you see, I'm going ah, set blocked and I'm setting to, to, to the true. Set blocked and true. So it will close. It is like red light. Yeah. It is like red light. And I need now to take the value here. From from this. So this is the second step I need to do. And then I need to restart. I have to check with my presentation. You see event close restart. To be able to use it again and I have my event open and I need to set duration of it and it is five minutes. Maybe you remember basic units when I go to the project and to the seminar settings to the model settings we have seconds. So here we have seconds as a basic unit in this model. So I have to be careful when I set duration for this event open. We are doing it like this. Restart. And five times 60, 60 is one is, is number of seconds in one minute and we have five minutes. Yeah. So restart. We can ride a 300, of course. Yeah, it should be five minutes, but don't forget in our model, in this model, we have seconds. So this is how to work uh, to close our hold. After detecting these two conditions are true, I am closing, I am blocking, and I take the last value from number of visitors, and I restart the uh, and I set duration. Uh, here it is easy for this event open. I just uh, need uh, some uh, simply settings, as you can see here in presentation. I need only to open. Yes, so hold tour set blocked false. So I will open. So in the model, when I go to open, I have only one action. Alt tour set blocked and false. So event close is doing this set blocked true and event close set block false and it work like this. And here we have already our settings for this variable. So. It is another example how to make some breaks unexpected or breaks that we are not able to define using schedule. I will start it to check if it works.
Now you see it is green and we will wait until we have 30 uh, visitors uh, here that left our queue for turnstile without tourist guides. So 21. And when it will be 30, it will close. It will be red. Twenty eight. OK, nine. And now it's closed. You see it is closed and we have the seconds running soon ah, oh, again opened. Yeah, so it works. And we are waiting until we will have a 60 visitors here. Mm, so now in this model, it is working. We have to be very careful when using uh, these uh, events. Uh, sometimes it can, ah, you see it was 60. Sometimes it can lead to some, misunderstand, some misunderstanding. I will show you the help. When we go to the help, any logic help, library, Mm, it is in uh, which library? It is not real. Agent parameters, probably. No. This is the hold, how it works, but I need custom agent types. Okay, we know this already, but I need to define event, event. Yes, so this one, yeah. And we can read that event is the simplest way to schedule some action in the model. Thus, events are commonly used to model delays or timeouts. And we can have timeout triggered event or rate triggered event. And we are using condition triggered event. Uh, this is how to do this. But this is important when a condition of an event is checked. And we have this option in purely discrete models. The condition is tested when something changes in the agent. Uh, so it works only in case that some agent has some transition or something like this uh, to understand uh what could be a problem sometimes i will show you this uh, model i have another model here it is uh in our uh folder in microsoft teams you can find it there but i open it from my computer the name of the model is the event when you open this model so you can find it in our uh, Microsoft Teams and models. So it is this one, event. And in uh, our assignment, you can find, you can see this note. Please read it. So I am now speaking about this note. So when we go to the model to the i can save this because we finished so i can close the 
these uh, classes. So when I go to this simple model, you see it is just source, queue, and sync. And I have this event condition. And here I have condition queue out count equal or greater than five. In case it is smaller, I have text condition is not fulfilled. In case it, it, it is true, it should change to condition is fulfilled. But let us follow what happens. So it should change the text when it's equal or greater than five. When I start this event model, it is running it's four, five, six, seven, and condition is not working. So you see, it is not working. And this is because we have no other action inside. There is no other action. It is some simple model. And yes, what we can do in our case, we can add another event. And this event can have recurrence time, for example, one second. So uh, any logic will check if this condition is fulfilled every second. So I can run it now. And two, four, three, four, five. Yes, it works. So we need something in our model additional uh, what will run uh, this uh, condition. So be careful how we use this. Uh, what is uh, good news for you? In case in your model there is uh, some statistics, it will work. So in our model, for seminar five, we have statistics, you see. And in case that our statistics, they have this option update automatically, it means that this event, it will be checked together with each automatic update of this statistic. Yeah. So we just need something additional to our model that will be checked, and it means that this condition will work. In other case, it will not work. So please be careful when using this event. And uh, for example, how to fix, how to solve uh, this uh, simple model. In this simple model, uh, this is so simple, it is not necessary to use event here. We can change the text, for example, giving this condition here to the sync. So uh, in case you need to change something in your model based on condition, uh, using of event, it could be good idea but it is not solution for all uh, cases. So in this case, it is uh, much clever to write it here uh, to this. So when I use uh, ignore and ignore, and I run it again, you will see it works without event two, three, four, five, and condition is fulfilled. Yes, so to use event, it is nice. It could be helpful, 
helpful to use event, but it is not a good solution for all situations. So this is for uh, our uh, seminar today.